Now, in my experience, in my conversations with people, I meet a lot of HR professionals, talent acquisition specialists that use psychometrics just incorrectly. It happens. There's a number of pitfalls that you can unfortunately fall for, which almost nullifies any benefit of using assessments in recruitment. There's a number of them. One that I commonly see, particularly when it comes to personality assessment, but also to some degree with ability tests, is not actually screening anyone and using the data in a sort of amorphous, nebulous way. So ideally, of course, from a best practice perspective, what you do is you give people the assessments and then you shortlist. People who are successful move to the next stage and then the next stage could be some sort of interview, but in using the assessment to ensure that there is a sufficient quality of hire, that the applicants have certain skills, abilities, traits that you need and will be represented in the subsequent stage of the recruitment process. Great. What some people will do is give the assessments and then not screen anyone, which of course nullifies the benefit of the assessment. And then they give the results to a hiring manager, usually someone who knows very little about psychometrics, who's unable to interpret them. And then they will try to use those assessments and their results alongside an interview to try and shape the interview. And so you imagine they've done, say, a numerical reasoning test and they've scored low. And then you do an interview and then you start asking interview questions about numerical reasoning. You say something like, oh, tell me about a time where you solve some sort of problem with numbers. The problem with that is interviews don't measure numerical reasoning. They measure how well you can communicate, they measure how well you can express yourself, which is important, but it isn't numerical reasoning. So what happens is people who are very charismatic and are skilled at interviews talk their way out of the scores. So not only is it irrelevant and that you're measuring something that can't be measured with an interview, but you are also nullifying the benefit of the assessment itself. You're ignoring the fact they've scored low and then you hire them and then they can't work with numbers because they don't have that skill and it told you that early on. That's a common pitfall and the solution is of course, just use them early on in the recruitment process and screen. And then when you invite someone to the next stage, you know that they're of sufficient quality because the people who are not didn't make it. And you don't want to rely on hiring managers to do this. They're almost always ill-equipped compared to HR and TA. Instead, just handle it yourself. Don't rely on the hiring managers and focus on quality of hire by screening effectively.